and welcome to At Issue. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm H. Wayne Wilson. Attracting jobs to central Illinois is an important function of the Greater Peoria Economic Development Council. Retaining jobs in central Illinois likewise is important. But more important than that is matching jobs to opportunities. That's also the role of the Greater Peoria Economic Development Council. And to have that conversation, we have two new leaders at the Greater Peoria Economic Development Council. Chris Setti is the new CEO of the, I'll say it one more time, Greater Peoria Economic Development Council. There has to be a shorter way to uh, say EDC, that. EDC, I think. <laughs> we'll say EDC call it for the EDC, rest of the show. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Chris, and congratulations on the new position. Thank you. Chris is the former um, assistant city manager at the city of Peoria. Also joining us is the new chair uh, for a week now, the new chair of the EDC, Mike Henriksen. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And for those of you in Woodford County, you may remember him as a member of the Woodford County Board and the current mayor of Germantown Hills. That's correct. You have a busy sky. And you still work, is that right? No, I'm... Uh, are you I retired? Re I retired too. That's years why ago. you can handle all this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And with that, let's start first with uh, some definitions. Um, first of all, what area does the EDC serve? Sure. So the, uh, the Greater Peoria Economic Development Council covers five counties. So it's Peoria, Woodford, Tazewell, Logan, and Mason counties. And the funding sources for the EDC are in, just in thumbnail sketch, what are they? Uh, about 60% of our funding comes from public and 40% from private. So that public can be from a county support to a municipality support and then a variety of different businesses from Caterpillar to smaller businesses that recognize the importance of economic development on the region. And with that funding discussion, you are, of course, a resident of Woodford County, and the Woodford County Board at times has said, uh, are we really getting our money's worth by contributing to the EDC? What do you say to the rural areas when it comes to its, you need to be investing in the EDC? How do you convince them that that's worth the investment? Well, I think we first go to the municipalities and a vast majority of the larger municipalities in Woodford County have chosen to participate in our investors in, uh, in the Greater Peoria Economic Development Council. Uh, they recognize the need for growth within their communities and they tend to be more involved in the economic development efforts than at a county board level uh, because it's more meaningful to them. So an, an example would be my community that has been very active. Uh, the village of Germantown Hills has been very active in economic development, has been an investor, and has an economic development uh, council within the village. And that, that helps uh, provide direct focus to economic development. Several communities have that kind of arrangement. Obviously the big cities, Peoria, Leslie McKnight, up in Chillicothe, things of that nature. But so oh, he's talking about going directly to the communities. What's the selling point? How, how do you sure. say, we may not have brought a job specifically to Germantown Hills, but it's still worthwhile. Well, I, th I think it's important and as, you know, specifically for the rural communities, but for the, for the entirety of, of the five county area, that, that jobs in this community are important. And it doesn't necessarily matter where the job is located. Um, you know, uh, I was out uh, and, and toured the old Mitsubishi plant, which is now Rivian. When Mitsubishi closed, 50% of its workforce lived in the greater Peoria region. And that was in normal. You know, and so people will, tr will travel for jobs. They'll travel between Peoria and Pekin. They'll travel from Woodford County, you know, to Mason County uh, for jobs. So the important thing is to have jobs because that's the underpinning of, of the economy. Uh, and then those communities can flourish by having, you know, a good retail sector, a good residential sector. Uh, so, so that's really the pitch to all of our investors is that what we want to really be able to do is um, improve the, the local economy by adding jobs to the local economy. And that makes everything better. So it doesn't matter if, uh, you know, um, in, in Peoria, you know, Caterpillar makes product in East Peoria, but a lot of their employees live in Peoria uh, and elsewhere around the region. So that's what's really, Mike worked for uh, years in downtown Peoria, but lived in Germantown Hills. 
So that's what's really important is, is that's the message that we are, are telling all of our investors is that they need, they, uh, the, the value proposition in supporting us is that by creating jobs in the, in the entire region, everybody benefits. So if creating jobs is one of the focuses, what kind of jobs are we looking at? I mean, how, how do you go about creating these jobs? And maybe it's not, I mean, we're, we're talking about attracting jobs from outside or what's most important? Well, I think we want to support the businesses that are currently there. Uh, we do business retention visits to understand what kind of obstacles might be in their way. way. Uh, there's, there's also when jobs or businesses uh, intend to grow, what kind of support and advice we can provide them as they consider where they grow, how they grow, new locations, and access to talent. Most job creation come from companies that are already here? That's correct. What is the likelihood of attracting, and let's not talk about a Mitsubishi, but a, a, a company that might bring 400 new jobs? They're not here right now. What is the likelihood of that? Is that where you focus? or we, we certainly do put a focus on attraction because we need to be able to position ourselves in the, in the national economy and the global economy to be an option for people to consider. That's some really hard work uh, because there's, there are lots of companies out there and trying to figure out which one of them is, uh, is looking to expand or has the opportunity to expand. And then you're also competing with every other community who's kind of in the same game as you are. So what really we try to do is, is um, you know, set ourselves apart by we have, you know, a low cost of living, low cost of doing business, great access to markets because we have ex excellent infrastructure and we have a great uh, um, Midwest work, in, uh, work ethic and a lot of integrity in our employees. Um, and, and we do have a great workforce. And so that's what we really try to sell. Um, you know, we work hard at attraction, um, but it really is about marketing. It's about setting ourselves up so that people, so um, the, the folks in my office that do attraction do a lot of work um, building relationship with site selectors in Chicago and Atlanta in Dallas because those are the people that are often making the decisions about because they're the ones that a company is hiring to find a location so you have to kind of be in their minds as to that Peoria is a viable location for them so that's some of the work that we do um, as well as doing some international outreach and and some direct marketing to companies uh, it, it's an important part of the work we do, but as you said, probably 80 to 90 percent of the jobs in a community come from the businesses that are already here or the ones that are going to be here. So we have a great workforce, but as I understand it, they may not be trained in the right areas for a company that has openings? Well, when you look at some specific skills as people or organizations grow, it could be uh, specific skills related to engineering or welding or robotics. Uh, the kind of things that uh, require some specific training and capabilities on an individual level to be able to execute the growth that they're targeting. So what role does the EDC play in trying to match a, a worker, a potential worker, and develop skills for that worker so that they can when, when those jobs open, they can fit in. Sure. So um, I would like to, think it's, we're more of a convener of services. There's lots of great service providers, ICC, uh, individual nonprofit organizations, our school districts. So what we're really trying to do is, is bring people together and align their, their services so that they're, that they're working in the right way. Some of the specific projects that we have, uh, we work with um, really from eighth grade through college and, 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 and then even older uh, workers as well. So we start, we had a program called Career Spark that was amazing. 3,800 eighth graders getting to experience, hands-on experiences at the Civic Center back in, in October. Because you have to, um, for some of these trades, you have to start talking to kids when they're much younger than uh, a senior in high school about what they want to be. Because there's career opportunities for them throughout middle school and high school that they could start you know, learning. So this was in a great event. Um, that brought, like I said, uh, 3,800, uh, you know, eighth graders from around, from all five counties to the Civic Center to learn what it's like to, you know, for nursing and in manufacturing and in hospitality. But then through high school, having them have those experiences that are out of the classroom through job shadowing and internships, that's what we call the career pathway. That you're really trying to build a pipeline from, from, from early on 
all the way through to adulthood so that, that, uh, that young people are preparing themselves because we know that there's a gap right now in the workforce, but that gap continues. So uh, you want to start preparing your workforce now for the jobs that we know will be there five, six, seven years from now. So we work very closely with ICC, for example, on, on, on the kinds of curriculum they're offering so that we're aligning it with, um, with what we know is uh, our employers are telling us. Um, for those that are out of work, we try to connect them. You know, that's what the unemployment office is for and CareerLink and, and there's, so we're not trying to duplicate services. Uh, we do work with uh, trailing spouses. When there's a, an employee that has been recruited to uh, Caterpillar or the hospitals or, or any other company in town, but they have a significant other that's coming with them that needs to find work. We also try to plug them in to, uh, you know, to the workforce. So when we talk about the EDC, and I think on the surface, our first impression is, okay, you're going to have to bring jobs or create more jobs from companies that are already here. But really, it's much broader than that in terms of this continuum of exposing individuals from a young age all the way through adulthood as to what they can do and how they can find training for that particular job. So it's not creating the jobs in so much as matching potential employees to future jobs. That's, that's a good summary of what we're working towards. And, and that's why we're working with not only ICC, but the public schools and making sure that not only these, uh, these young people can see the opportunities, but they can grow within our region and not have to leave our region to find a good paying job and to be able to raise a family. Is that one of the problems is that we're losing people to any, any other place that may have uh, particular jobs? Is that part of the problem? I, I think it's, all, I think it's a, a problem that, that lots of communities struggle with is keeping their talent here. Um, you know, the, the world, you know, as they say, the world is flat. It's pretty easy now to get from Peoria to anywhere else. And so when those job opportunities are there and they're not here, um, then, then people take, will take advantage of it. So, yes, yeah, certainly it's, it's trying to, you know, keep our, our, our existing talent here and then bring new talent in for the jobs that, the, you, know, if, uh, you know, if a company is looking for a particular skill set and it's not here, they're going to have to bring you know, somebody in from the outside. And it, that's also very important to be able to attract them here. But what we, have, what we are told by every time we go out and do a business outreach visit, um, every time we talk to a company that's not in the city of Peoria about what they need, what they want to see in, an, in a community that, uh, to locate in, or what a current company needs to grow, it's always about workforce. It's the number one issue, is having uh, not just an available workforce, that's certainly important, but understanding that if, if you're going to make a decision, if you're a forward-thinking company and you're going to make a decision to move to a community, you really have two concerns. One, do you have the people there right now to take the jobs that you're going to create? But maybe more importantly, if you're planning on being there for 10, 15, 20 years, is there a pipeline of people in that community who are being trained in those positions so that your company continue to grow and evolve? So it's, it is the most important issue that we deal with. I had an opportunity last week to talk to some people, principals involved in startup companies, small companies just starting to grow, and they had two major complaints. One was just the one you described, is finding those people who have the skills that can fit into, and many of these are technical type mm -hmm. companies, but the other one was funding. And they said, we get started and we can find a grant or uh, somebody will help us out, and then there's a blank space that they can't find venture capitalists to support them in central Illinois. How does the EDC, does the EDC get involved in trying to match money to some of these startups? Because as we explained, startups are very important to the future of this community job-wise. So we, we work with uh, the Brave Launch with Bradley. We work with another number of different organizations and we work with the, the angel group, and we, we want to make sure that as these companies grow, that we can collectively find funding so that they can stay within our community. The last thing we want to see is to, to start up a company and then for them to continue to grow, have to leave the region. And if they find that money elsewhere, right. they may leave. 
You know, I think that one of the, the roles that the EDC plays is, is really trying to build an ecosystem, right, uh, of, for the startup community to flourish in. Um, so uh, we have uh, um, one person in our office who really, Randon Geddes, who, who really works on, on that. And his job is really to connect people to each other. So he's reaching out to the startups and he's learning their stories. And when they say they're struggling with something, he, he tries to build a network so he can go find it. But the, but the biggest concern is venture capital um, that, that just doesn't exist here um, in, in, in a large quantity. We have some really great companies that are doing some really amazing things. And you, you, you uh, um, have, have met with some of them uh, in the past and even more recently that could really be the future of our community. Uh, we want them to stay here, but if uh, that seed stage capital is such an important part, because it's the riskiest part, and that's where that's what that that's where it becomes difficult, is that people don't want to uh, invest in risky things. You have to be able to make a lot of small bets uh, and hope a couple of them pay off, because that's that's the way in Silicon Valley and in New York City and elsewhere where these companies are growing, that's exactly the sort of startup infrastructure that exists, is people willing to make those bets. And you mentioned risk and, and betting, um, and that was the complaint that they have. Angel Investors is wonderful. It's a local group that funds uh, different startups, but they, according to the startups, they don't want to bet on that risky portion, the very early stages. They'll help later. So that's where we're missing, you know, we got a grant to start and then there's this middle section where venture capital money just doesn't seem to want to, it's not available in Central Illinois to a great degree. Well, the, the Angel, the Central Illinois Angels is a great organization that um, is there to, you know, to help uh, companies when they're ready for them. Um, I think the issue that, that most folks have, and, and it, uh, it's that, you know, if, if, you're, uh, if you want to pick a winner, Right, and you're going to find one company to put your money behind. Um, that's a that's the risky business of startups because many of them will fail. But if you could spread, if you the idea behind creating some sort of seed fund is this: if you if you can gather enough money up from investors um, and then spread it around to a number of different startups, you'll have some some failures, but you'll also have some successes. And then those are the companies that then you can take into those later fun, you know, stages for something like angel investing or, or, or traditional bank loans. But again, this is the sort of infrastructure that exists in lots of other communities that we look at and go, why can't we be like that? We can be like that. We need to build it just like they have. And some of those companies, Autonomous Stuff, which uh, puts together uh, software for driving cars without touching the steering mm -hmm. wheel, um, natural fiber welding, um, which is exactly what it sounds like. They're taking natural fibers and making all sorts of things out of it. Um, Devbright, bump boxes, things of that nature. Do you work closely with these companies and make sure, what, what role do you play to say, we want you to stay here, what can we do to keep you here? This is one of the roles Randon Geddes is deeply involved with, with and he helps uh, these companies as they, as they have an idea, but they have to develop the business capabilities to be able to execute. They have the idea, but they don't have any business plan ability. Right. So uh, through a number of different organizations, uh, we've supported them. We've, we had a $10,000 grant quarterly that we provided. Uh, it was a competitive uh, three, we boiled it down to three to four uh, companies and they came and they, they provided their pitch and then we provided uh, $10,000 each quarter uh, for these organizations to take the next step. And it was funding that they didn't have individually. And if I, you know, if I could add to that, we treat startup businesses very much like we treat our existing businesses, the existing mature, we'll call them mature businesses, is that if, if, we, if, if they have a problem, we try to help them solve it. Uh, that may be by, by putting them in touch with somebody else within the network. As, as you said, a lot of these folks are idea people uh, in the startups. They're not necessarily business people. So can we connect them with business people who can help them take their idea to market? Can we hook them up with attorneys to talk about um, intellectual property? If they have facility needs, we can, we can work with them to find 
um, find a, uh, because maybe they've grown from being just in their house or in a small office. Now they need production space. So those are the sort of concierge services that we will provide in working with those startups, treating them just like if Caterpillar were to come and say, hey, we need a new um, building. Uh, you know, to put something in, or 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 any company would say, "Hey, we're we're bursting at the seams. We need to grow." We would help them as well. That's the way we treat startups. The, these companies could be some of these could be really major players in Central Illinois. How do you? I mean, you, you talk about treating everybody the same, but some of these are really going to provide many, many jobs if they stay here in central, central Illinois. Right. How do you know that? <laughs> where, well, I, where, where, do you, where do you put your bets, as you <laughs> referred to earlier? Well, I, I mean, I, I think w we do really try to treat them all equally. They, they eventually will sort themselves out. You know, lots of small businesses will fail and their ideas won't have panned out or they will have never have gotten the money that they needed or, or something else happens. Um, so uh, we take an approach that they're all equal in our eyes. Obviously, when we see companies that have a lot of, of opportunity, they will start coming to us more because they'll start needing more. And that's the way we'll be able to identify that they're growing. So a company like Natural Fiber Welding, when I met them three years ago, they had two employees. Now they're up to 15 employees. And that might not seem like a big jump, but that's actually a pretty big jump. A 15, you know, we could use a lot of companies in this town that employed 15 to 50 people. Um, because that's what makes for a very diverse economy versus, you know, a couple of very big companies. It's great to have these smaller companies. You know, I, Caterpillar was once a very small company, right? In the, in the early 20th century, they started off as a startup. And they, you, we see how, how big and important they've grown, not only to our economy, but to the national economy. Um, companies like Natural Fiber Welding, Autonomous Stuff, they could be the ones that my kids and my kids' kids are talking about being the, uh, a part of the bedrock of the Peoria, greater Peoria economic um, situation. Does the Peoria Next Innovation Center on Main Street play a role in all of this? Yes, we worked with them and uh, they are, I think if you go back several years, they were really the, the foundation for a lot of this work. Right, yeah, they, they provide, one of the great things that they provide is they provide very low cost, office space, yeah. which, you know, when you are in the idea stage of your company and you're not actually selling anything quite yet, right, um, and you're just kind of at the proof of concept, being able to find a place that you can, um, uh, you know, not only work, but also then be surrounded by other startups. Natural Fiber Welding got their start in the, uh, at the Peoria Next Innovation Center. Uh, one other thought that occurs to me when we talk about funding, Alexis Kazam, who's involved in a lot of different developments, um, uh, Junction City, et cetera, he's come up with this APSCO mm -hmm. uh, program. It's at Richwoods High School. Do you work in conjunction with that? Uh, I'm not familiar with how, what level we worked with him. Uh, you know, I, th that's, that, they're their own program. Um, and so, you know, we, we've, we've supported them. Uh, but, you know, they're kind of a startup in and of themselves. So they get treated the same way. But that was really the, um, uh, uh, the brainchild of, of Alexis. But one of the things that, that we're doing is we're working with high schools uh, through the Junior Achievement Program um, to create... Um, entrepreneurship classes and then opportunities for kids in other high schools as well. The APSCO program is great. My daughter is on the APSCO team at Richwoods now and it's a, it's a phenomenal program and, and that's what we want to, to happen is for all of these things to, to work together. Well, Couldn't you use that as an example to, to other people that are already established in the community and say you've had success, step forward like Alexis has? Definitely. So we can create jobs? Definitely. One of the things that uh, in, a, in a recent conversation we had with startups was the idea of, of an adopt, adopt a startup. You know, that as, as we said earlier, they're, they're sometimes they're idea people, but they're not business people. Can we hook them up with business people to help guide them? Um, and then, you know, maybe, maybe funding follows from that, but, but even that, that professional relationship, understanding how marketing works, how purchasing works, how the, how the business climate works could be really important. And real briefly, um, and, and maybe this is something we should have brought up at the beginning, but is there an overarching view that the Peoria, Greater Peoria EDC has in terms of your role in the five county region? Well, I think one of the important roles that we play is we're, we're an economic development district and 
we create the comprehensive economic development strategy for the five county area. And that really lays the foundation uh, for the work that we do. Uh, that's a, done every five years and uh, we're required by the EDA to, to support that. And it really looks at some of the challenges we have and then uh, some of the solutions that are out there that we need to address and provides the data. Obviously, it's a complex issue, and we'll invite you back at a later date uh, after you've got a little bit of work underneath <laughs> your belt in your new positions and see how we're doing in, in attracting and retaining jobs and creating jobs in central Illinois. Thank you to Chris Setti, the new CEO at the Greater Peoria Economic Development Council, and also thank you to Mike Henriksen, who is the new, newly elected chair of the Greater Peoria EDC. Thank you both for joining us. And you join us next time on At Issue for a new edition when we'll be talking about food deserts, not just in Peoria, but in rural areas as well. Food deserts on the next At Issue. <laughs>